Hey, what's up, guys? <sighs> wow, okay, that was too much enthusiasm, but I, I wasn't ready for that, so I don't expect anyone else to be ready for that. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. But today, I thought I would bring you a review. I have not done an album review in the longest of times. Um, just My issue with album reviews is that... <laughs> it's not an issue with album reviews. It's an issue with me making them, is that I have to, like, preempt my videos because I work full-time in a way that, like, I have to, like, give myself time to listen to that album and understand it, edit it, upload it in a time where the album is still relevant. This is Circle Wave's brand new album, Sad Happy, which was released a week ago, yesterday, <laughs> on Friday the 13th. And yeah, I thought I would review it. I love album reviews. I love, I, if, if I could, my dream would just to be review albums. Um, but here we are, and I didn't choose that path in life, and now I just have to make subpar YouTube videos. Okay, well that was sad. This album is um, their fourth? Hmm. Who didn't research this before the video? Me. Pretty sure I'm right, it's their fourth album. Wow. Um, this is their fourth record in their career. Um, bouncing off the success of their first album, which um, was proper pop rock bliss um, a really fantastic album one that stuck through the the dawns of time and through the apocalypse we're currently living in um t-shirt weather remains one of the greatest songs of their whole career um, and it really set them up for this um great career that they've had they've made so many fantastic songs and in in only these four albums they probably have um so many of my favorite sort of songs in this genre um, and when I heard Happy at the beginning of this year I was so excited for the full album. Obviously they're following this um, trend of splitting your album into two sections like you've got the happy and then the sad in the same way that uh, Marina had the love and fear I think it was love and fear and a few other um, artists are doing the same thing and how do I feel about it? I don't. I don't have an opinion, I just feel like I would get that this song is a sad song and this song is a happy song. I don't really get, I just don't really get it, but I do get this album as a whole. Um, I think that this does the, the whole splitting album thing really, really well because you can tell that there is a distinguished. Yeah, and I think that they did a fantastic job with this album. So I'm gonna go through Oh, of my favourite tracks, tell you what I didn't like and what I did like, but it's mostly good. I promise. Like, my opinion means anything. They're fine. We're going to be going through my favourite tracks. So, the first track on the album is Jacqueline. This is obviously the first one I heard when the, um, sort of first EP-ish dropped earlier in the year. Um, and I thought it was such a fantastic way to introduce this album. Really upbeat song, um, a really good sound to it. Um, and I was reading an article, I think it was NME, that made an article about the, the first song and Circle Waves were sort of explaining that it was about, you know, a struggling single mother um, and they sort of wanted to celebrate that because, you know, who, how many fucking pops rock songs are there about mothers and how great they are. Um, and I like it, it's a completely original concept, I love the idea and I think it's just a nice way to introduce you to what's to come, especially in this first half. Uh, it's just such a good sing-along song as well, and I just really love it. Next up is Be Your Drog, which kind of shifts gear, giving you more of a rock feel, not kind of, definitely. You have these amazing sort of electric guitar solos before, um, or should I say during the chorus? No, after the chorus. <laughs> wow. After the chorus, I just really like it. I think it's such, yeah, a different change of pace, maybe something a little bit more experimental compared to some of their other stuff, um, but equally a fantastic record. Definitely going well. This first trio of songs is, is really good. Next up, we have Move to San Francisco, which uh, lyrically, obviously, maybe isn't as... No, it is. Lyrically, this song is getting confused another thing. This song, I feel, is a bit more mature than their other songs in the sense that they're, you know, he's sort of saying, is the grass greener in the other side? Everyone is saying that going here is making everyone else happy and all the pretty people go there. But like, I'm not everyone. You know, I just don't know if you want, if moving here or theoretically going to this place is gonna be a good idea. Um, and I just like that, it's that sort of independence, like, I don't have to do what everyone else is doing, you know, I don't have to fit the mould kind of thing. Um, 
And yeah, it's a really sweet song and I really like it. Wasted On You is the next track. I didn't really care for this one. It was a nice sound, but I feel like maybe could have been left out because this is quite a lengthy album. Obviously, I know it's split into two parts, 14 track album. So I reckon maybe that one could have been left without. Didn't really care for it. The Things We Lose, <clears throat> wow. The things We Knew Last Night is the song that really got me hooked um, and get got into the circle waves because I was like, wow, how can you go from Be Your Drug to this in the same album, the same artist? I was really impressed. I, I just love the diversity um, and the, the vulnerability that these guys have. And the songwriting in this, in this song is really second to none. It's just so nice. It tells like a story um, and I, we love a story. We stand. It tells a story of a boy and a girl who are just like having the best night of their lives. They're like on the beach, um, putting the worlds to right. They're going skinny dipping in the sea. Maybe they're not skinny dipping. This says that they just go in the sea, but you know. And it's just such a good, such a good song. Um, and yeah, it's that sort of exclusivity. I don't think that's a word, but I'm making it a word. It, between like, you know, when you're falling in love with someone and it's like, there is no one else here. It is just me and you. It's just me and this person. We're putting the world right. We're having the best time. No one knows what we know. It's like we've got a secret that, you know, no one else knows, like the secrets of happiness because we're so happy and we're so free and no one else is. And I just, wow, it's such a great song. And, and um, yeah, it's such a nice intro to the to that first half as well. Next is Call Your Name. Call Your Name is um, fantastic. I really like this one. It's probably one of the standouts. Um, it's very classic Circle Waves. It's very pop rock. It's very that. It's just, it just does what it came to do. It does it very well. Next up is Love You More. Eh, not fast, not fast. Um, then we have Sad Happy. So this is the first song on the sad side. I am very mixed on this song. I don't know how to feel about it in the sense that I, sometimes I listen to it, I'm like, wow, this is like the best song on the record. But then other times I'm like, why did I say that? Also, why am I saying that to myself? I'm insane. Yeah, I'm just very split on the, on that song. Um, it's just, I'm, I'm, you know me, I'm sad, happy. I feel like that's kind of a weird line. Maybe I just don't understand it because I'm just sad. Don't know what happy is. It's a nice track. It's a nice track. I think it opens up nicely into the, to the second bit. Wake Up Call is next and um, maybe like Love You More and um, what's that other one? Wasted On You. Maybe it could have just been left out or as like a bonus thing because I tend to skip it. None of the songs on this album are bad. None of them uh, are on the level of me. Taylor Swift on Lover, where that was such a good album and then you had that and it's like, no, this is genuinely bad. Nothing is bad on here. It's just some are just not... Let me say this. I think when you have songs like Jacqueline, Be Your Drug, The Things We Lose Last Night, Move to San Francisco, Sympathy, We'll Get There, Train to Lime Street, We'll Get There, um, and Hope There's a Heaven, We'll Get There, um, it's hard to keep up that momentum and pace the whole way through the album without sort of falling back into um, maybe sort of your comfortable-ish state. I wouldn't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just from a consumer standpoint, I can't make an album. If I made an album, it wouldn't be a fraction as good as this. Um, but like, that's just how I feel as a consumer. Um, you know, anyways, next up is Sympathy. I think this is question mark best track on the record, record, <laughs> record, fuck me. The best track on the record. Um, it's great, it's great. It's very sad, very fitting for the second half of the album. Um, it's nice, it's sort of about, you know, this, what we're all going through as young adults, um, I say that only young adults watch this. Mostly young adults watch my videos, but what am I saying? It's just like growing up sucks and this age sucks because you're like in limbo, whereas like you're mentally way more mature than you were. Now you're like looking to the future, but you can't get there yet because money is a thing and the coronavirus is also a thing right now. So you're just kind of stuck, you're hitting a wall. I'm not saying that this song was made about the coronavirus, but it should be. It's just about, yeah, like getting older, the sadder side of life and, and just 
being okay with that and not wanting anyone's sympathy because like that is just a part of life is being happy and sad and in this case it's sad um and it's just everything comes together so nicely in this song it's such a well-structured cohesive song starting off with a nice acoustic guitar and then you know the production escalates and it just it it just works very well, and I really, really like it. Battered and Bruised is the next song. Um, this gave me very... F Did my voice just break? Wow. This song gave me very Fallout Boy, early Fallout Boy kind of vibes, and I'm not mad about that. It's a nice song. I don't skip it, but I don't actively enjoy it. It's there. Um, it's just not one that I love as much, basically. Uh, but next up, uh, we have two of my favourite songs on the whole, whole record. Uh, Hope There's a Heaven is the first one. Damn, if you want a song to make you cry, this is it. This is, this is the saddest in the same way that the thing we the things we knew last night was probably the happiest. This, that was the high happy point. This is like the, I'm sad. Um, but like with good reason, it's obviously talking about the death of a relative, um, I got parent from it because in the lyrics um, they say um, will you like me as a child kind of thing and it, and it kind of struck me as a young like the, their parent or whoever died young because they obviously don't know a lot about them um, which is heartbreaking you know you want to know all these things you want to know what were you like as a child and things like that and I hope there's a heaven so that we can catch up and you know you can tell me about everything um but it's just done in such a masterful way and it it's just so so good and i think yeah one of the best songs on the whole album it just makes it so somber but it's just so so good um it's followed up by train to lime street which probably the most experimental song on the album i think it's just obviously there's no lyrics it's just an instrumentation but the first it was the first song i heard from the sad side that i was like wow this is incredible um, it really, really is. Um, and yeah, I just thoroughly enjoyed listening to it. It's like, I don't know, it trained to Lime Street. I don't know where Lime Street is, but it, it gave me like cold, dark winter morning vibes, walking to work. That's just the vibe it gave me. And I don't really, I can't explain it. It's just, it feels nostalgic. I don't know how to explain it. I was speechless when I heard it. It's like, wow, this is so good. And I think the album should have stopped there. We have like an extra sort of filler track, Birthday Cake, which is again, is a sweet song. It's okay, it, it's nice. It It's not a bad song. None of them are bad. It's just, I really love Train to Lime Street. Um, so yeah, those are probably my favorite songs that I've mentioned as in Jacqueline, Be Your Drug, Move to San Francisco, Call Your Name, The Things We Knew Last Night, um, Sympathy, Hope There's a Heaven Train to Lime Street, probably my favourite tracks. I think 14 is just a stretch too long. Those extra five songs I didn't mention could have been left without. Maybe Keep Sad, Happy and Battered and Bruised in there. I think that they do well. Um, but overall, I really am enjoying listening to this album. I find something new every time I listen to it. Um, it's a three out of five here from Anthony Fantano. Um, and yeah, I like it. You should go listen to it. If you haven't heard Circle Waves, I know they're not like the biggest people, not many people will probably watch this video, but I love talking about music. I love talking about the music that I like. So if you are new here and you are a Circle Waves fan, if you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much. Please subscribe to my channel. <laughs> um, I'd really appreciate it. I'm trying desperately to get to a thousand subscribers this year and it's like a bit too desperate. Um, but at the very least, just give me a like, a little click makes my day. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching in my next video. Goodbye.